The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship on this second Sunday of Lent. We're so glad that you are worshiping with us today. We're also celebrating today the final Sunday in Black History Heritage Month. I want to say that this service today is adapted from a service offered by the Reverend Debbie McMillan, a member of the United Church of Canada, uh, offered as part of the United Church's Black History resources. I want to thank her and all of the contributors of these resources to our denomination and for the way that they engage with our life of faith here in congregational life and as the wider church. I also want to acknowledge that as we gather for worship, the land upon which our community serve and worship is the traditional land of the Ojibwe Chippewa of the Anishinaabe Nation, on land covered by Treaty No. 29, also known as the Huron Tract Purchase of 1827. We give thanks for the opportunity to live and serve on this land with all its peoples. We acknowledge where relations have gone awry, and continue to apologize and live out our apology in listening and in discerned action, both as a church and as individuals. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, we take a moment to acknowledge that identity which binds us all together, that identity of siblings in Christ. And so we light our Christ candle to remember God in our midst. as loving parent, devoted son, and imminent spirit. And we light our other candles as candles of care, remembering those in our congregations, in our communities, all those who are near and dear to our hearts on this day. The peace of Christ be with you all. I encourage you to reflect for a moment on where you have found Christ's peace in this past week. And if you're watching this video with others, I encourage you to pause and share with one another where you have found God's presence in this past week. Let us join together in our call to worship. Look back. Look back with courage. Face the truth God reveals to you. Look forward. Look forward with hope. Look to the future. See possibilities growing from the seeds of lessons learned. Let us learn and unlearn history together. Wisdom is vindicated by all her children, and all God's children proclaim so be it. Amen. Our opening hymn is found in More Voices number 2, Come All You People. This is a hymn written by Alexander Gondo, originally from Zimbabwe. We sing not to claim these hymns, but to uplift the voices of those of African descent, expanding our own horizons both musically and liturgically to the way our siblings of African descent sing their relationship with God. So let us sing together, Come All You People.
Let us join together in our prayer of approach. Let us pray. Almighty God, source of life and life itself, your Holy Spirit gathers us into your presence as a hen gathers her chicks to herself. In the safety of this sacred space, virtual and real, help us settle into this time of being together, individuals in shared community through Christ and with Christ. Help us push, push aside distracting thoughts that impede our learning and our listening. Help us uncover our fears. Drive out each one with your perfect and perfecting love so that we can be changed in mind and will be changed in heart. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture readings for this second Sunday of Lent and this final Sunday in Black History Heritage Month focuses on the idea of connection through the ages, of ancestry and of the future. In the past, present, and future, God's presence and care is made known. And in the biblical figure's reflection on their own past, present, and future, they come to realize a changed path a different calling than they were anticipating. In our own Lenten journeys, we too are called to be open to honestly and God-drivenly reflect on our past, present, and future. For today's readings, we'll be hearing from the NRSV version of Scripture. Our first Scripture passage is one that's likely familiar to most. This is the covenant that God makes with Abram and Sarai, soon to be known as Abraham and Sarah, found in the book of Genesis. Having resigned himself to twilight years of being wanderers, God promises God's presence with them, and that their future will involve being the ancestors of all nations. As the source of three major religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam that cover the globe, it calls us to reflect on our own ancestry and future with all God's children. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty, walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall you be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. God said, to, God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Our next passage comes from the final part of Psalm 22. In this part of the psalm, the psalmist proclaims the truth about God's reign and care, namely that the oppressed will find freedom and that God will be with them in an impactful and righteous way. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel. For he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, 
and all the families of the nation shall worship before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. Our final reading comes from the Gospel of Mark. In this passage, Jesus is preparing his disciples for the long and difficult journey to Jerusalem. Having borne witness to amazing miracles and teachings, the disciples were now going to learn that there is a cost to discipleship. However, the ultimate reward and the furtherance of God's kingdom more than make up for their loss of comfort or privilege. Then Jesus began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the Church. Thanks be to God. We continue with our next hymn found in Voices United, number 120, O Jesus, I have promised.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable unto you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Ebenezer, Benjamin, Benjamin, Solomon, George, Harold, Elmer, Carey, Alex. Ebenezer, Benjamin, Benjamin, Solomon, George, Harold, Elmer, Carey, Alex. As a kid, I memorized that name order intensely so that I could rhyme it off whenever I wanted. These are the names of the ancestors on my mom's side of the family, going back to Ebenezer, who came to Canada from the United States in the early 1800s and likely whose family had been in the States for a few generations before that. Some of those names were among the original members of what's now Trinity United in Cannington, my home congregation. Genealogy is a big deal in my family. We even have the big book of Samus on my mom's side, tracking all the family branches going back to old Ebenezer. I'm not sure when it was last updated, but it is exciting in a way to think of all the names to come in that big book of Samus. Our readings today similarly beckon us to look back upon our faith ancestors and evaluate our current and future roles as disciples. But looking back in our scripture, the names and narratives that are not, the names and narratives there aren't static on the page. They're rife with reflection and divine response. And with the culmination of Black History and Heritage Month, we are called to question how faithfully and openly we reflect on our relationship with the past, our relationship with God, and our relationship with others going forward. Our lectionary for today draws us back to a couple of names that are likely ingrained in most of our minds, the ones that we can pick out in the huge list of lineages at the beginning of some of our Gospels, Abram and Sarai, or later on Abraham and Sarah, the ones who laughed in disbelief that they could have any lineage, let alone be the parent of many nations. But that is the reality. Three different faith traditions find a common ancestor in Abraham, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. We celebrate in this narrative that God willingly commits to the two desert trekkers and their future descendants to be in relationship this relationship of enduring love, one that we know from last week's reflection is never severed. But in celebrating these faith ancestors in this time of Lent, we also recognize their weaknesses in faith, the times where their relationship with God was strained on their part. They didn't believe God at times. Abraham was deceptive on occasion. While revered as patriarch and matriarch of our faith, they were still humans like us. They struggled, and at times they needed reconciliation and reorientation. They themselves had gone through a journey of reflecting on their own ancestors. We often hear of Abraham and Sarah as sojourners in the desert, but we don't often hear of their home life in the city of Ur, far east of Canaan. In coming to know God as the source of love and meaning, Abraham and Sarah were inspired to take an honest look at their family around them and found that in many ways they were not living up to the ways that are faithful to God or ways that cared about others. It was a hard realization, leading them to leave and journey with God but they were able to reflect on this legacy because they had come to know God and had found purpose and life anew in God. God's sustaining and transformative presence ultimately proved a greater connection. This narrative of Sarah and Abraham calls us likewise to look honestly and faithfully at our own ancestry, the systems, the institutions, the attitudes that we have inherited, and the Lenten call to reflect and reconcile relationships, we have to look faithfully at how these inheritances from our ancestors have excluded or oppressed others in our shared history. With this being Black History and Heritage Month, 
We celebrate the heritage and contributions of those of African descent in our communities. We celebrate the histories of people whose own ancestry tells a tale of grief and of hope, part of the all nations we come to know in God. But part of this celebration is a Lenten reflection of where our structures and attitudes ignore or oppress their histories. We lament that we were not properly taught the history of slavery in our country growing up, or of the black pioneers and innovators who changed our lives without us knowing. Our ancestors failed to teach us about the pioneers in our midst today. The Huron County Museum had an exhibition last year about the James family, some of the earliest settlers around what is now Cranbrook. Black settlers from Nova Scotia, they bounced around Peel and Wellington counties before settling in the former Gray Township. They lived there for several years, celebrating joys, sorrows, and loss as other pioneer families did, before moving further south years later. While we might know the tales of our own pioneer ancestors, we haven't been faithfully presented with the full history until recently, if we've been exposed to it at all. The constant movement of early black families and communities as a result of discrimination exemplifies the ways in which God's love and covenant were not faithfully responded to. And part of our Lenten journey is recognizing that. The systemic sin of racism still exists today. Systems that we might benefit from unfairly if we don't openly acknowledge it. As was mentioned in our Minute for Mission last week, third generation black Canadians make about 32,000 a year compared with 48,000 a year by those who aren't a visible minority. And while 94% of young black Canadians want to complete a university degree, just 60% think it's possible. They're more likely to be victims of hate crimes. And even just this year in my home region of Durham region, the region tokenized and made light of the history and heritage of black Canadians in their initiatives, failing to really engage with the past or present reality of racialized communities, both the parts that are celebrated and uplifted and the pain that's carried from the past. In the wake of this, our reflection and need for renewal is encouraged to be pointed towards God, the God of covenant relationship, the God of building and sustaining, the God of reconciliation, the God of all nations. God's imminent presence helps energize and guide us through the difficult process of reflection. This includes the learning and unlearning of what it means to be a child of God, as Abraham and Sarah had to do. God revealed to them new paths, a renewed way of relating and serving God's world and God's peoples. This is the message for us today as well, as we are called to dismantle that which oppresses and more faithfully and openly discern our past, present, and future. It's a daunting task, a task that is laughable in its seeming impossibility, like the laugh of Sarah or the doubt of Abraham about their role as parents of God's peoples. Yet in God's intervening relationship with Abraham and Sarah, we come to know that which seems impossible or too established can birth new life, can bring about change. The Genesis narrative doesn't deny the old age, the entrenched ways, but it dares to speak of God's ability to break through and beyond it. They are people like us, flawed in ways in systems that didn't fully express God's love. Abraham and Sarah were us. Yet God still chose to be in relationship with them, and, brung, and brought them to a new place and a new realization. From there, they and we can reconcile and celebrate. 
Their name, their identity, their lineage is framed first and foremost by a relationship with a God whose love and righteousness is more expansive and transformative than you could ever imagine. With a Lenten reflection on the past, we look to our present and our future. Here we heed the call of Jesus. Take up your cross and follow me. Take up the cross and follow Jesus, who embodied both the sometimes arduous and daunting task of discipleship, but who also embodies the love and grace made known from God to help with this task. To serve and learn, despite the flawed real weaknesses that we have, that we have in our heritage, in our institutions and our systems, that's what the cross represented for Jesus. To be changed anew, taking the lesson from Peter that we cannot hold on to old visions or understandings that don't reflect God's love made known in Christ and the Spirit. And in time, in carrying the cross and following Jesus, we find the empty tomb, the good news for all nations, the seemingly impossible obstacles overcome, and the greater unity found in it. Take up your cross. Name that cross and the burdens of it. Name the systems and attitudes that divide and deny so that we may address and take them down as a community of disciples. For we have been given new names from God ourselves, child of God, sibling in Christ, one in the Spirit, a name with the urgency and transformative grace offered from God to change our ways and to celebrate with our siblings. Take the initiative to research and reflect on the heritage and current experiences of our siblings of African descent. Follow Jesus. Follow those for whom Jesus is good news. Openly and faithfully bear witness to those who have known and still know oppression or discrimination, but who also live and celebrate a heritage and community that is striving for justice and love. Take not just this month, but take all of your days to learn of the ancestors and our siblings of African descent and of all our relations. As you follow them, reflect and address with God and others how what comfort or privilege you might have over others might hinder your ability to take up and follow Jesus. We do all this knowing our covenant relationship with God. God ties us together as a family. God provides the strength and grace to reconcile and make new. This is our ancestry. This is our story. And we bear witness to this story lived out in our black siblings and all God's children this Lenten journey. May those whose names come after us on our family trees know the same covenant of love we have known and bear witness to our current and future work for God's justice and love. Ebenezer, Benjamin, Benjamin, Solomon, George, Harold, Elmer, Carey, Alex, child of God, sibling in Christ, one in the Spirit, with all our relations. Thanks be to God. Amen. As we reflect on our history, our present relationships, and our future reality with God, we come to a time where we ask for renewal and repentance. And so I ask that you join with me in our prayer of confession and renewal. Let us pray. Compassionate Creator, look with mercy upon us as we name our collective brokenness. We name our resistance to unpack traditions and to engage in difficult conversations. We name our willingness to remain estranged from that which challenges us or frightens us. We name constructs of superiority, language that others 
biases that entrench. And we name the isms we carry in our thinking that is carried over into our living. Compassionate creator, most loving parent, for these and other transgressions, have mercy upon us and renew us. Friends in Christ, hear the word of the psalmist. God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are as high above the earth, so great is God's steadfast love towards those who fear God. As far as the east is from the west, so far God removes our transgressions from us. And as Father has compassion for his children, So God has compassion for those who fear God. Thanks be to God for forgiveness and renewal. We continue with our next hymn, found in Voices United, number 678, For the Healing of the Nations, a hymn originally written in the 1960s in honor of Human Rights Day in December, but it helps us to reflect all year long and strive for global justice and peace that is made known in God. Let us sing together. As we celebrate the life and heritage of our siblings across the world, we also recognize the work that's going on in our own congregations. We have our fellowship times, we have our psalm and prayer group study going on right now, uh, and various other things happening within the church. I encourage you to check out our website or read our weekly community newsletters uh, to get more information about what's happening in our congregations. I will say for the time being, we're not going back to in-person worship while we're still in the orange zone. Uh, But while we, when we get more information and more understanding about how the numbers are heading, we'll be discerning further in the coming weeks about when and how best to re-enter our sanctuary safely. In the meantime, I hope that you are finding some spiritual sustenance with these online uh, worship services. And I encourage you to engage in some of the other things that we're offering as communities of faith to help uh, 
to help remain a community during this time. We also recognize the work of the wider church with our Minute for Mission. Our Minute for Mission today is titled, When a Roof is More Than a Roof. When is a roof more than a roof? This isn't a trick question. Buying a roof isn't exciting. It isn't particularly inspiring either. But it is necessary, and it is what allows exciting, inspiring things to take place safely beneath it. Thanks to your gifts through mission and service, West Haven United Church Camp in the Humber Valley region of Newfoundland and Labrador was able to repair the roof of its registration building and cookhouse. Picture what happens under these roofs. Staff gather to plan activities for young campers. Families line up to register little ones who will learn skills and make friendships that last a lifetime. Faith deepens through prayers and camp songs. Hungry campers chat excitedly over healthy meals and, best of all, the snacks. A roof is more than a roof when it facilitates the sharing of food, friendship, and faith. Your generosity through mission and service is often directed to core funding. Sometimes our church supports trendy projects, but often we support trusted organizations that decide themselves which projects most need to be completed or which infrastructure needs to be funded. That's a good thing for two reasons. First, it means that partners can direct the support to projects that aren't as easy to get funding for, seemingly mundane things like roofs, for example. Secondly, it means that when emergencies happen, like a global pandemic, the funds aren't earmarked for a particular project and be quickly redirected where they're needed most. With, with West Haven's emphasis on expanding campers' physical, mental, and spiritual health, roofs might be the farthest thing from most campers' minds, but they are every bit as important as ensuring as there are enough marshmallows for the s'mores, says Josephine Belbin, Director of Grants at West Haven. Mission and service doesn't always support the exciting projects, but we always support the necessary and meaningful ones. Thank you for being the kind of informed supporter who knows that a roof isn't really a roof. It's safety, it's community, and it's love. Please join me in supporting the mission and service of our wider church. And now we come together in a time of prayer for the people. Let us pray together. Almighty God, your prophets, your Son, and your Spirit encourage prayer and relationship with you during times of trial and temptation. As we give thanks, we also bring our concern. As we praise, we also echo the cries for help. And so we bring to you our prayers for those who we and you care for deeply. In all of this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bright, shining Christ, there is much for black and brown bodies to dread here in the Americas. The legacy of enslavement lives in our systems, but the thin gospel of oppression can die in our worship if we choose to shine bravely reflecting your glory, if we choose to reject the lies of racism and white supremacy, if we choose to dance, make music, share pain, spread joy, and wake up. We can choose to fight for a better society, and we can remember that we are called and named like the stars we are made of and the sun whom we follow. Help us to make good choices, Lord. Help us to shine brightly. For this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving and healing God, we also pray this day for those whose lives are continuing to be impacted by the coronavirus. We pray that comfort and peace be known to those who continue to feel isolated and that safe and meaningful methods of communication are made available. We pray for our leaders that they may uphold sound advice and not put people in danger and that proper discernment takes place with the decisions ahead. We pray that you inspire us to care for and stand up for those most grievously impacted, those in marginalized communities, those with fewer health resources available to them, and those who are in vulnerable employment situations. Be with us, Lord. May we trust in the wisdom of those you inspire. 
and continue to show our love in safe and meaningful ways. In all of this, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now in a moment, we gather up in prayer those who are on our hearts for particular reasons today, either spoken aloud or in silent prayer, knowing that all is heard by you, loving God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue our prayers in the words so lovingly taught by your risen Son, who exemplified relationship with you, God, as a mother loves her child, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We continue with our closing hymn, found in Voices United, number 575, I'm going to live so God can use me, an African-American spiritual that has moved people for generations. May we use this rallying song to take up our crosses and to be a transformative force in the world alongside the Holy Spirit. Let us sing together. Look forward, look backward, look outward, look within, and look all around. Learn your histories, those of your family and those of your faith. As you do, remember that you are a beloved child of God, a precious sibling of Christ, and a treasured companion to the Holy Spirit. Stay blessed and share God's blessing with others. Amen.